Lynch style of music, which was very raw and hard driving, um, it, it is, is the basis and foundation of a lot of other styles of music. Um, a lot of things sprung from that. People often say that uh, if it were not for Link Ray, you wouldn't have metal, you wouldn't have punk, you wouldn't have the garage type sound that, 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 that you hear now. Uh, and I think, you know, to an extent, that's, that's probably true. You talk about the driving chord sounds, you know, and that goes back to rumble. Even though on the record now, it sounds sort of tame, back then, it, it was just, you know, fantastic, unbelievable, banned in some places because of the name. At that time, there were a lot of gangs you know, around the country. And uh, uh, there were places that did ban that record from being played. But people remembered that. And, and people who heard it, it gave them the inspiration to, you know, play their own music. Uh, Link as a person and Link as, uh, as the professional musician. Um, <clears throat> as a person, he was just uh, a character. Yeah, you could joke with him, carry on with him, and he'd be right in there with you. And, uh, you know, he, he, <laughs> he, he was very honest and straightforward. You know, back in those days, people used to say, oh, well, Link Ray, you know, it's he, drugs and all this stuff. He's the straightest guy I've ever been around. Absolutely, he didn't tolerate any of that. No drugs, no booze. No, nothing. And, and when we played, there was none of that going on. And even afterwards, it was some, we, we could drink, but no drugs. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You'd be gone in a minute if he caught you with something like that. <clears throat> but um, he was a great guy. He'd go places with us, uh, um, talk to us, you know, just straightforward as, as a friend. Um, but put him on the bandstand, and he was all business. That was what he called his music. And that was a very serious issue with him. You didn't mess up his music. And um, he, he, he was working on it constantly, all the time. Uh, if, if you stopped by his house, he'd be playing something, trying to work out some kind of new pattern or riff or sound or whatever. And, and, and that is part of his music, all these new things that he came up with, new sounds and, and uh, new ideas and concepts. And, and, uh, but it was strictly business. I mean, you know, you, you didn't clown around when we were working uh, during the songs. In between, yeah, you could. But not when we played his music. That was a very serious business to him. And I think he's, he, he had that outlook on things through his entire life. It wasn't just back in the old days. He, he was very concerned about how his sound was coming across. So <clears throat> he expected us to, to play to enhance what he was doing. This, this picture was taken in 1983 at the Wax Museum uh, in Washington, D.C. And uh, it's, it's, one, it's one of the last shows that Link did in this whole area. He, he did one more show after that at the 930 Club, and we were with him then too. But uh, after that, he was gone. So, you know, th th this is a big memory for us because we were there and it was right at the end of the time that Link was here in this area. Because after he left in 84, he never returned to the Washington, D.C. area. Back in those days, you never saw people coming in the clubs where we played with a camera or, or a movie camera. Back then it would have been Super 8, I suppose. Yeah. But, uh, or, or a tape recorder. Nobody had a portable tape recorder that they would carry around. Um, but hardly ever even somebody with a camera. And we, we don't have a lot from those days. It's hardly anything, really. So, uh, uh, you know, that, that's, that's been bothersome because uh, w what you see from Link comes out of the 70s, 80s, 90s, and, and 
the, the years before he died, people did take a lot of movies of him, but we, either with cell phones, movie cameras, whatever, uh, uh, at his live shows. But in the early days, it, you just didn't see that. It didn't happen that much, unless some record company was there trying to do big promotions, but uh, uh, you really didn't see it. People didn't, didn't come in those days to do things like that. They came to see you and listen to you and dance. We do play all of the old Link Ray songs, but there's one thing that we do that most people don't. We play them like they're supposed to be played, like the records, because we did them with Link, and we know how he wanted to do them, but not so much exactly like the record, but the way Link did it on the bandstand live. And there is a difference. There is a difference. So John has learned all that. He knows how to do that. And he sounds just like Link. And you know, I've always said, close your eyes and walk in and listen to us, you'll think Link's on the bandstand. But you know what we have tried to do is give a very authentic and accurate presentation of what Link did on the stage. So if you missed him on the stage, and if you see us, you'll hear the same thing. And I think that that's important. If it wasn't for that, you know, I don't think we'd bother doing this. But that's what we want to do. We, we appreciate that music enough that we want to keep it going. And um, that, that's why we, we've done it. But we decided if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. Okay, this is a 1962 Fender Precision Bass. <clears throat> and um, in, in 1962, there was something a little different on the basses they made, and that had to do with the tuning keys. The tuning keys on this particular bass are, are tuned opposite. You turn them in the, in the opposite direction that you usually do. In other words, usually to, 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 to raise the pitch of your string, you, you would turn it counterclockwise. But on this one, you do it just the opposite. You turn it clockwise. And as far as I know, it's the only year that Fender had that. All, all the rest are, you know, the standard tuning. Um, back then, your basses came with these guards on them, and uh, I've left them on there because I primarily play down here with a pick, as you can see. Yeah. And because you, uh, uh, you, in, in order to get a real biting. Uh, 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 strong sound with Link's type of music, you really had to use a pick because we did a lot of very fast runs and we did a lot of double picking. And it, w it would be very hard to do that uh, without a pick. So th that's what we did. But I play down here mostly. Now once in a while I play up here on the slow songs and just, just use my fingers or whatever, but most of the time down here.